About one fifth of charitable giving happens in December, and there are ways to ensure your donation makes an impact year round. And joining us to talk more about this is Thomas Tai, President and CEO of Direct Relief. Good morning, mm -hmm. Thomas. Thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you, Amanda. My pleasure. Um, so our viewers know Direct Relief is a global medical assistance nonprofit. Uh, most recently, you guys have been working in Ukraine, in Puerto Rico, in Nepal. You do work year round. Let's talk about how inflation is impacting your nonprofit this year. Well, like, like it affects everyone else negatively. I think each dollar buys less and you know, there's fewer dollars available. So I think that's uh, the challenge of inflation. It tends to hit people at lower incomes uh, harder. So we're doing everything we can to kind of combat the effects of inflation by looking for efficiencies in our own operations, looking how we can save money and expand activity, which nonprofits need to do when times get tough. How do you recommend that people decide which charity to <clears throat> give to? Well, I think at the first level, it's a very personal decision that no one can tell you what you should care about. And so that uh, is really up to the individual what speaks to their heart and um, what they care about. But once you decide that, it is worth spending some time to make sure that the organization or the organizations that promote that cause are going to make you proud of your money. And so there are resources like CharityNavigator.org or Charity Watch or the Better, Better Business Bureau's Wise Giving Alliance called Give.org that can help inform consumers about which nonprofit organizations on an objective basis spend, how they spend their money, which percentage goes to fundraising or overhead versus the programmatic activity. And so that's an important thing, I think, to spend some time to figure out. It's not just the marketing. Some, there's not a correlation necessarily between good marketing and good work. And some of the very fine organizations aren't the flashiest, but they'll do right with your money, and it's worth um, spending a little time to try to find them, too. Mm -hmm. uh, where are you guys seeing your resources going uh, the most right now? I, I feel like you've spent a lot of time in Ukraine. Yeah, it's just we've been, you know, a, this huge event that Direct Relief was reasonably well positioned to assist, and we were able to um, dial up our operations rapidly, and they've maintained a, uh, been maintained at a very high tempo ever since then. At, at low cost. I mean, we were set up in Europe to do that. The United States is always our biggest single country of focus. I think there's a chronic set of um, a chronic gap that exists in the health system for people who are not fully insured or uninsured or undocumented. And I think we work extensively with the community health centers, including those around Texas and the free and charitable clinics, including the fine groups that exist in Texas to make sure that their patients who have a need for a medication but can't afford it, that Direct Relief can work to provide that free of charge. And you said, Thomas, um, making a donation is is a personal decision. If if our viewers, um, you know, are, are hearing your words and choose that, you know, maybe I should give a little bit to Direct Relief. Where can they get more information? Uh, directrelief.org has more than a little information. Has 75 years of history. That's probably more than any one person would want. But it does have what we do, where we work, kind of our mission and values, and the specific activities uh, that we're involved in now, as well as a lot of disclosure about how we use the money that's entrusted to our, our organization. Thomas, thank you so much for everything that you're doing. Uh, President and CEO of Direct Relief, I have a good holiday season. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it.